Hi, welcome to this video of IBM Spectrum Protect and Spectrum Protect Plus and our common data repository known as Open Snap Store Manager. In this demo, I'll show you how you can monitor Spectrum Protect Plus sending its backups directly to the Spectrum Protect directory container storage pool. And that'll be monitored from the Spectrum Protect Operations Center. I'll also show you some commands you can use in the Spectrum Protect command line and on the Spectrum Protect server operating system. James Damgar from development is going to walk you through this demo. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And with Spectrum Protect 8115 in the Operations Center, we now have a new OSSM tab that's available. For the initial release, the purpose of this tab is to monitor your OpenStep Store Manager instances. So in this case, we have the Operations Center running on our TapServe 17 VM1 system, which also has OSSM installed and running. But with this single page, you can monitor not only this OSSM instance, but also an OSSM instance that may be running on other Spectre Protect servers as well. So to begin monitoring a OSSM instance, we can click on this monitor OSSM button. We'll enter in our server information. And in this case, you give it the instance owner user as well as the password for the instance owner of the Spectrum Protect server and OSSM on that particular Spectrum Protect server instance. We'll hit next. It fetches the SHA-256 fingerprint and SHA-1 fingerprint of the key for that system for you to view here and verify manually if you'd like. We can hit accept. And once this is done, we now have the OSSM instance listed here. So what this allows you to do is more or less make sure that this instance is in a healthy state. So this shows you the host name of where the OSSM instance is running, whether it's online or offline, the port it's listening on, the Spectrum Protect server it is talking to as its storage backend, and then also tell you the Spectrum Protect Plus server that it's associated with, as well as the number of proxies that it's associated with. So if we go right click and hit details, this shows us a lot of the same information, but also gives us information about what the client node that's defined on the Spectrum Protect server is, as well as shows us that it's been synchronized with the server. So synchronization is important for it to have a consistent data state between OSSM and the server. So this gives you that checkbox. So we can go over to the keys tab. So one of the operations that you can do here is generate a new registration key that's used to register OpenSnap Store Manager with Spectrum Protect Plus. The reasons that you might want to register a new key is perhaps you've lost the original registration key that gets output at the end of the OSSM configuration wizard. Another reason is maybe the key was compromised and you want to generate a new key or the Spectrum Protect Plus server may have been lost or somehow compromised and you need a new registration key to register OSSM again. Or you have a new Spectrum Protect Plus instance you'd like to use. This shows us the current API keys that are active so an API key is different from a registration key. You use the registration key to register OSSM with a Spectrum Protect Plus instance. When that registration is complete, a shorter length API key is created and associated with that Spectrum Protect Plus server to uniquely identify it here. So we can actually revoke the key here by deleting it. And in that case, we would have to generate a new registration key and register OSSM to that Spectrum Protect Plus server again. This basically breaks the connection between OSSM and this Spectrum Protect Plus instance. So if we wanted to create a new registration key, we can hit the registration key plus button up here. We can click on create. And so we now have a new registration key and notice that it's quite a bit longer than the API key. We can tell what type of key it is over here by the type column, either a registration key that's used to register for the first time or an API key, which 
tells you that this key is active and in use by the Spectre Protect Plus instance. There's no real status or Protect Plus server associated with the registration key. It is just used for registration purposes and then it's removed. So we can actually use the copy key button here to copy the key to our clipboard. And then if we were to navigate back to the Spectre Protect Plus GUI and were to add an OSSM storage, we can input this key as the uh, registration key value. After Spectre Protect Plus successfully registers with OSSM, it would then appear here with a API key. One of the final things we can do here is remove an OSSM instance from monitoring with this minus button. If we were to log in to the Spectre Protect server while the backup is ongoing, so a couple of things we'll notice is when the OSSM is added, to Spectrum Protect Plus for the first time. So when you add it as a storage component, Spectrum Protect will actually create a unique node name that identifies the, the Protect Plus instance. So we have OSSM dot, and then some unique identifier that's generated at runtime. It'll also create a policy domain that is specific to that SPP instance as well again with a unique identifier, but both are prefixed by OSSM, so you can help kind of filter out what you're looking at here. And then it'll create a copy group in the domain standard. So it'll create a standard uh, management class copy group for you in the domain it generates, and it'll point the destination for backup to the storage pool that you selected as you went through the, the wizard and SPP. So the SPP wizard will filter the directory container pools it shows to you. For tech preview, it will only show pools that currently do not have any non-OSSM data in them, with the intention being that you're going to isolate your OSSM data from other non-OSSM data for tech preview too. And then while the backup is running, we can do a query session and we see a set of client sessions related to that node that are running. And you'll notice that there's quite a few of them. And this is because OSSM will use a session pool from the VADP proxy system to the Spectre Protect server. So data is flowing in over multiple sessions at a time. And then if you do a query occupancy for this node name, you'll actually see a file space appear. Currently, things are set up so that each virtual machine that is backed up is backed up to a separate volume in OSSM terminology, which maps to a, a separate file space in the Spectrum Protect server. This is the namespace for the file space that it goes to. Switch over to display mode equals list. Makes it a little bit more readable. So if we do a query node, we'll actually see the OSSM related node show up here and the domain. And then if we do a query occupancy for that node, we'll see a file space that's been generated for the virtual machine backup that's in progress. So this should have the VM name at the very end, but otherwise it's a SPP generated unique name that will uniquely identify it, both in the SPP's metadata catalog as well as on the server. Expiration is gonna be driven by SPP. So even though these are backups, they're not archives, generally speaking, the life cycle is going to be managed by the SPP side rather than the SP side. And as far as expiration goes, Spectre Protect Plus has its MongoDB and database catalog where it keeps track of all the different restore points. If there's any kind of automatic expiration that takes place on the SP server side. If you wanted to look at some of the service stuff a bit more, so over on the Spectre Protect server, as a part of the configuration wizard that we ran, it lays down this service. So if you do a system CTL status OSSM, there is this OSSM service that you can see in Etsy systemd system OSSM.service. So this is configured to run automatically. So every time you restart the operating system on this instance, it's going to fire it up automatically. The OSSM service that runs on the Spectrum Protect system is very intimately tied to the Spectrum Protect server. So it is 
communicating with the SP server. It's basically getting all of its state information from the server over time. It'll wait for the server to come up if it's down, that kind of thing. It'll report it as down. Over on the proxy system, when we did the proxy deployment, two things occurred. It actually installed VADP proxy software into opt IBM SPP. So it laid everything down here as a part of the VADP software install. So this is where all of that type of code lives. And this is what would be installed if this was not an OSSM proxy. If this is just you know, your traditional VADP proxy that you're using to protect VMs to vSnap. So the same software would be laid down here. Um, the difference is with the OSSM deployment, it will create this OSSM directory. And this is where the OSSM proxy software lives. Both the executables, the database that's running on the proxy system, and everything else kind of occurs below this file system path. So if I was going to do uh, a sudo system CTL status, there's also an OSSM service that's running over here that is a little bit different from the one that's running on the Spectre Protect server. This one is using a local uh, MariahDB database rather than talking to DB2 directly. On the Spectre Protect server, OSSM is connecting to the local DB2 database of Spectre Protect and interacting with the tables directly. Over here on the proxy, it has its own lighter weight database, MariahDB, um, that it uses as kind of a working space. So as a part of that, there's not only the OSSM service, there's the OSSM-DB service. And this is the local uh, MariahDB instance uh, that's running over here as well. So I guess uh, one piece of verification that a user could do, because the Spectrum Protect GUI doesn't provide much in the way of status of these components, is if they wanted to, they could log into the Spectrum Protect server and do you know, a system CTL status OSSM and make sure it's active and running. And then on the proxy that they've deployed to, they can do the same thing and make sure it's active and running over here to know that they're you know, kind of in a good place. And you might notice that on this proxy system, I'm using the TSM inst1 user that I selected previously. In our documentation, we include guidance on you know, what this user has to be. It's going to be very similar to what is currently there for a VADP proxy user. But this is something that someone's going to have to go off and create ahead of time before they deploy. Great. Thank you, James. Be sure to check out the other video we have on this tech preview for OpenSnap Store Manager. It does walk you through installing the OSSM code and doing both a backup and restore directly from the Spectrum Protect Plus GUI. Thank you very much.